Well, Marlon Humphrey, he recently compared the difference between this year's Ravens wide receiver unit to ones in the past, saying now they have a, quote, elite group, whereas in the past, he said, well, they were just some guys. Yeah, and if that wasn't enough, he was also asked a question about one Lamar Jackson, and Marlon ended up being rather embarrassed when he completely fumbled the answer. I can't wait for that one. All right. I am Sarah Ellison alongside Bobby Trossett. It is Thursday, June 22nd, and this is your morning Ravens update from inside the vault. So as second year outside linebacker David Ajabo gears up for his first full season in Baltimore, expectations for a player who was projected to once be a bona fide first round pick before tearing his Achilles are considerably high. Plus, Ravens undrafted rookie running back Keaton Mitchell. He is starting to gain some buzz on Ravens Twitter, and I'll explain why up next. We have all that and more coming up. Thanks for waking up with the Morning Vault, where you get the most important Ravens news in about 15 minutes. So, in an interview with the Rich Eisen Show this week, Sarah, Ravens cornerback Marlon Humphrey actually admitted that in years past, he could, quote, relax in practice based on the level of competition or perhaps lack thereof he was getting from the wide receiver unit across from him. How about that? Yeah, well, those relaxing practices, those are in the rearview mirror now, says Marlo, because, well, listen to the way he compares this year's wide receiver core to past ones. He's kind of got me cracking up here. It's looked uh, really good. Um, in the past, we've had... We've had some guys, but now we got like, I think in the past we've had teams coming to games like, okay, we could probably double this guy and be kind of fine. Um, while, you know, I've been going week to week and you're like, okay, you can't really double anybody because you're in trouble either way. If you, right. Whoever you double with, they got this guy. So we kind of have, um, to me, just some really elite weapons that if you, I know on the other side, defense is going to look, okay, who do we want to eliminate the most and who do we think we can at least survive with this? So I think we've on paper put together, you know, a really tough offensive roster as far as, you know, pass catchers. And um, it's exciting, but the practice yeah. is, is, is not, there's not much relaxing in practice anymore. There's not many <laughs> I like, oh, I, you know, I kind of, you got to be ready to go, which, mm -hmm. which is really good for both sides. You know, you want to, you want to be good. You want to be great. The best way to do that is get the work in and practice. And so I think, you know, EDC and the front office, what they've done this offseason has been just really good. Okay, so first off, as I mentioned, he does call some of the past units that, you know, and he says it in a nice tone. He's trying to be nice about it, but he calls them, you know, there's some guys. That's not the best compliment in the world. And then meanwhile, he calls this year's unit, at least on paper, Bobby. And hopefully this comes to fruition. He calls them elite. Well, I don't know. I mean, they're going to have to earn their elite status come September, Sarah. But at the same time, there is no doubt that a healthy OBJ, Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, Nelson Aguilar, and Devin Duvernay already appears superior, period. Yeah. And to Marlon's point, you can't just double team, say OBJ, and then chill with Mark Andrews and Bateman and Flowers. I mean, those guys... You put them in a one-on-one -on -one situation, they're going to eat. But in the past, you could just double-team one guy and then feel, as Marlon said, pretty relaxed. I mean, who exactly put fear in opponents from last year's unit outside of Andrews? Uh, did Demarcus Robinson put fear in anybody? Devin Duvernay, Deshaun Jackson, Sammy Watkins? I mean, Bateman could have, but he was injured for most of the season. And then you can keep going back just to prove Marlon's point. Look back at 2021. Again, Bateman was injured. And I would personally give props to Hollywood Brown from that unit at times. You know, sometimes he could be inconsistent, but I thought he was solid. But again, Duvernay, Sammy Watkins, and then James Prochet. We can keep doing this. In 2020, it was Willie Sneed, Miles Boykin, and Des Bryant. And then only Hollywood on that unit was producing at wide receiver in, in, in a significant way. And then it was, again, basically the same unit in 2019. So no wonder Marlin could relax and practice, whereas this year he is predicting a totally different environment during training camp. 
And in this next soundbite, he's being a little facetious, but I think you'll get the idea on how it'll be very different this time around. I think it'll be a really fun season. It'll be some really competitive training camp practice. It might be some, might be some fights out there. You might be getting reports oh, wow. about everything. Ooh. Yeah, it might be, it might be war out there. So really? I'm excited, <laughs> but I'm really excited. Uh, to get that work in practice. All right, let's switch gears just slightly here. And I think in that same interview, we got to see the goofy side of Marlon that he often likes to show us. Typically, it comes in the form of tweets. And this time it came when fill-in host for Rich Eisen, Kirk Morrison, asked Marlon if he knows which two Ravens have donned the cover of Madden. Pretty straightforward question, probably for most diehard fans. Perhaps you don't even need to be diehard to get this question right. Not so much for number 44. Can you name the two Ravens that have been on the Madden cover? There have been two Ravens. There's been two Ravens? Two Ravens have been on the Madden cover. Oh, I know, actually. Who are they? Jamal and Ray. Mm. One is Ray. Oh, Jamal Lewis was on there? I think he was on was there as a... Was he on the Brown? Was Joe Flacco wasn't on there. Mm-mm. Guy, he just signed a big contract with the richest contract in NFL history. <laughs> you might see him a lot. You might see him That's a lot. Ball. This is a bad ball. Obviously, Lamar. I don't know Lamar how I didn't even think of Lamar. Yeah. I guess I was thinking. <laughs> I just love Marlon. I, I don't know if other people get bothered by that kind of stuff. I find it endearing that he doesn't take himself too seriously. And you obviously couldn't see the video because this is an audio podcast but everyone just started laughing when you could see the expression on marlon's face when he finally realized duh it's lamar lamar is the second guy who's on the cover of madden and by the way it was just a couple years ago and by the way marlon you were his teammate when it happened so i fully expect the guys in the locker room once they get back to the locker room i expect those guys to give him a hard time for that one still to come here on the vault what might year two look like for one david ajabo and which position group was singled out by nfl.com as lacking depth entering 2023 The Vault is sponsored by Oakley. Express your style and build a look that's made for you. And I know for me, I've been rocking the prism black polarized lenses this summer, and I'm loving them so far. Oakley's changing the game, and it's time to discover a whole new world of possibilities. Do you run? Do you golf? Maybe you train, or perhaps you just want to look like Lamar Action Jackson. If any of the above is true, you got to get yourself a pair of Oakleys today. Suited for everyday eyewear with frames and lenses allowing for an extension of self. Really, it's an expression of your personality. There's more than meets the eye. And here on The Vault, we're all about look good, feel good, perform good. And that's why Oakley is the perfect partner for us. And hey, since it's officially summer, you may want to upgrade your sunglasses game right now. So go visit oakley.com to find yourself a pair today. Oakley offers prism lens technology, which is a proprietary technology to Oakley and available for everyday settings as well. If you're interested in learning more, head on over to oakley.com and do your own research. And while you're there, get yourself a pair of everyday glasses that'll be sure to change your look for the better. When you wear Oakley, there really is more than meets the eye, but don't just trust Sarah and I. Try for yourself. I've worn a lot of sunglasses brands in my life, and I can confidently say that Oakley's not only the best looking, but the best quality out there. So head on over to oakley.com for more information today. All right, Bobby. So NFL.com, it recently ranked the 10 biggest remaining roster holes league-wide, not just on a specific team, league-wide. And one category within the Ravens came in at number six. And that's Baltimore's edge rushing room, Sarah. And here's specifically what NFL.com's Kevin Patra had to say about that ranking. He wrote, quote, Baltimore spent the offseason stocking up on offensive weapons for Lamar Jackson, but the defensive front has serious questions. 2021 first round selection Adafe Owe took a step back in year two and will look to rebound this fall. 2022 second rounder David Ajabo had most of his rookie campaign wiped out due to a pre-draft injury. The Ravens are relying heavily on the Michigan product becoming a consistent force. Two of Baltimore's top sack producers from last season aren't on the roster. 
Calais Campbell left for Atlanta, and Justin Houston remains a free agent. Could a Houston reunion be in the cards? It wouldn't be a surprise if general manager Eric DaCosta added multiple veterans at some point to round out a group lacking in depth and playmakers, end quote. So, Sarah, we've talked about some of this, right? I think Kevin brings up some valid points. But you want to know what I think would wipe all of his analysis completely clean, completely out of the picture? It's if Ajabo evolves into the player he was projected to be pre-Achilles, which was legitimately a top 15 selection in last year's draft. That changes everything if it comes to fruition. Yeah, I agree. And based on what Eric DaCosta said back in January, it seems like he's in the same boat too. Yeah, I mean, we are extremely excited about Dave. Came off the Achilles, obviously. Uh, he worked very, very hard to come back. Um, you know, probably could have played a little bit earlier, but quite honestly, we stayed very healthy at that position. We loved our depth at the outside linebacker position. Um, we didn't want to rush him in there. And uh, But he's a long, tall guy, explosive, great attitude, um, tremendous, tremendous potential. And we just can't wait to see what he's going to do this year. I mean, I think having a great offseason for him, you know, considering what he went through last year, is really critical. His attitude is awesome. He's got an infectious personality and a lot of ability. So basically, the Ravens were very clearly being cautious with Ajabo once he was cleared physically last year. But now, let's fast forward to the present. Baltimore brought in pass rusher specialist and guru and literally a guy who's nicknamed Dr. Rush, a.k.a. Chuck Smith. He was brought in to man the outside linebackers room this offseason. And as we learned earlier this month, he was quick to make it abundantly clear how he feels about Ajabo's upside. He's everything I thought he was when he was at Michigan. He's quick. He's uh, confident. He's twitchy. He has a high uh, pass rush IQ. And he has mastered a lot of different moves, and they, they're learning how to do it. But it's like a, all time. We're con constantly talking every second, every minute, on text, on threads, all of us, you know, communicating about it. And... He has the pass rusher's mindset. I'm just, he's got that dog mindset. And he's going to have, he's going to have a lot of success. I actually think, I mean, he's a lot better than I'm sure people have an idea of what they think now. You know, like, oh man, he's come back from Achilles. Dude is ready. He's going to have an impact. Those dudes are getting ready. They're uh, working really hard, and that's the best thing I can say about them at this stage right now. So, Sarah, basically, in conclusion, the jury's still out on if there is a glaring hole at the moment in Baltimore's outside backers room. They have a proven vet in Tyus Bowser, a young player who's underperformed in OA, a first-year rook in Tavius Robinson, and really, the great unknown in Ajabo. The aforementioned Houston remains a viable option, but it wouldn't surprise me if the front office decides to see what it's working with at the start of training camp in a month from now, first and foremost, before making any roster decisions from there. So, Sarah, Keaton Mitchell, is this dude a dude or what? I mean, he's a name that suddenly has some Ravens fans buzzing on Twitter. So catch us up to speed. Yeah, well, they're buzzing because Real Analytics, okay, they tweeted about some of the fastest NFL rookies of the 2023 class, and they featured a video of Mitchell reaching 22.5 miles per hour. That is indeed fast. And the East Carolina running back showed patience in this video that they showed, vision on the play, and then he had excellent bursts once he hit a hole in the line, and nobody was going to catch him after that. So definitely a speedy back. And what people may not know, Bobby, is in addition to this one play that's been, you know, retweeted around Ravens Twitter, is that Keaton, he's actually the son of a former NFL defensive back, Anthony Mitchell. You may have heard of him, especially some of the old school fans out there. Anthony Mitchell, he played on the Ravens Super Bowl 35 winning squad. So there is you know, a pretty cool connection there. And, you know, Keaton himself, he's got an impressive college resume. He started all 12 games last year for the Pirates, and he churned out nearly 1,500 rushing yards, added 14 rushing touchdowns. That was ranking second in the FBS with 7.2 yards per carry. And, Bobby, I won't get into all the numbers, but he can also catch the ball out of the backfield. Yeah, those 
stats are impressive. I mean, they pop off the page at you, and when you combine that with the speed that Ravens fans saw on that one play, it has some saying speculating he could be the team's next secret weapon. And I think a, a certain percentage of those fans are hoping that he makes the 53-man roster. I mean, do you think that's realistic? Yeah, listen, I mean, as long as J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards and Justice Hill are healthy, I'd say it's highly unlikely. Uh, Keaton is, he's speedy, but he's also small at 5'8 and 180 pounds. And, you know, he would have to ball out during training camp to you know, pass those other guys up on the depth chart. Now, like I said, if there's injuries, then yeah, there's a chance. But, you know, us not being out there at practice at the OTAs and at the uh, mandatory mini camp, it's really hard to say how he did. So one follower, you know, reached out to the athletics, Jeff Zrebeck, who's been at all those practices. And here's what Zrebeck said about what he saw over the last couple weeks. He said, quote, Keaton looked fine. It's always tough to evaluate running backs in non-contact practices and shorts, but he definitely had some speed and quickness to him, and he showed good hands, close quote. So, listen, we just don't know enough at this point to be able to say that he could leapfrog everybody else on the depth chart. So, But li listen, I'll tell you this. I guarantee this isn't the last time that fans will ask about him. Once training camp rolls around and then the preseason is here, We'll have a better idea of who Keaton is, and then we can give more solid answers. And before we fly, some other quick news items, beginning with this from free agent wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, who tweeted the following earlier this week. Quote, whoever's in my future wide receiver group, I promise I will make your job easy. Close quote. Now, I don't know who he's referring to specifically or who he's directing that at, Sarah, but I know a lot of folks around NFL circles were watching that one closely. And, of course, we're, what, a week removed now from visits that he made to Tennessee and New England. Nothing set in stone just yet. In other news, Roquan Smith is on a week-long NFL USO tour to Japan to visit United States troops. This year's NFL USO tour will visit an Air Force base and Marine bases with a focus on seeing different activities, including unit visits, one-on-one -on -one meetings for mission briefings, and hosting NFL Play 60 camps on site. Good for Roe, and he's had an awfully busy offseason too because, as we learned on our show when he came on during the draft, he's already been to Japan. He's already done a, a backpack trip with Marlon and Ronnie and Tyus earlier this offseason. So safe travels to Roquan and everybody out there right now. And finally, apparently Patrick Queen, Sarah, has been hanging out with the NBA's Kyrie Irving. He tweeted the following earlier this week, quote, PSA, Earth is flat. Thank you. Carry on, end quote. I'm not even going to get into it, but that was PQ's lightning rod of a tweet. We are peak offseason. It is June. These players have more time on their hands. But yeah, thank real. you. Thank you for listening to The Morning Vault. We created our show to keep you plugged in to all things Ravens. So if you've been enjoying our content, please consider joining one of our membership platforms at patreon.com forward slash Ravens Vault podcast. Now, as you all know, we've been betting on ourselves by creating content independently from any big broadcast station or corporation. So with your membership support, you'll help us keep churning out daily Ravens content. For years to come and a special shout out to two of our returning patrons this month bill justice and toey Faree. we appreciate you both for believing in what we're building here in baltimore and beyond and as always we'd also love to hear from everyone whether you're a patron or not with comments questions or if you'd ever be interested in advertising you can reach us by email via baltimore ravens vault at gmail.com and that is all the time we've got today but as always it's that time of the month be sure to submit your submissions for our Q&A monthly mailbag episode, which is going to be released the first week of July.